can I, I can hear, I hear myself? myself? Can you hear, can you me, hear twice? me twice? <laughs> well, well, we're off to a good, good start. start. <laughs> Unless. Unless. Oh, okay. I think I fixed it, yeah? Okay, that's cool. Hello. Oh, and I forgot to turn. Okay. Off to a great start because I've forgotten all the cool things that I was planning on doing. Stop encouraging Oh my Cav. goodness. Nine months of Cav. Nine months of Cav. Can you believe it? Thank you so much for the subscription. And oh, little John Pierre. Hello, Nug. Hello, Mr. Fist. And I think Boring Depressed Introvert uh, did a cheeky Channel Points redemption before. So thank you for that. Um, why am I looking this way? Okay, that's better. Okay, hello. Let me see if I can do something. I thought we were going to get two streams for the custom. <laughs> um, as much as I know you would all love that, sadly, no. Um, I want to try something else, which is properties. Wait, let me go to browser capture. Does this work? Create new and I'm going to call it uh, phone. And it's going to be that. Does that? Whoa. <laughs> okay, there we go. That's cool. Um, now I just need to make it fit. And I'll put it underneath the stream overlay. You see how, how I, I let you all in as part of the experience. <laughs> overlay. Wait, why have I moved it back behind everything? Oh, it's because window, there we go. All right. Come in, come in. Hello. We have a special guest here today. Um, I literally just started the stream, so I apologize for the rather racist imagery that uh, you're being subjected to right now, but I, I promise you it's, it's all for a good cause. I'm testing out something, Louie. Look who Hello. it is! Long time no see! It is I. And this face is just like, oh! Oh my god. <laughs> It's pretty so, awful. Huh? Is this what we're doing? <laughs> well, I was thinking maybe we can start out by just <clears throat> going through this this fantastic new find. Oh yeah, that's right. Oh yeah. Uh, I'm just gonna wash my hands. Okay, please feel free. Um, let me know if there's any issues with the microphone or anything like that. Um, but yeah, so that's Louis, my my brother-in-law. Um, <laughs> who used to do Wednesday for Wednesdays and is now back again for Wednesday for Wednesdays, except on a Saturday for the first Wednesday for Wednesday. Saturday, yes, I do have a Sparks mouse pad. Thank you for noticing. Hey there, Eric. Hey there, Black Lamb. Welcome, everyone. So um, I was in a shop. To oh, you're wearing your Jurassic Park yeah. PG cap. I had really bad hat hair, so oh. <laughs> I thought I have to keep it on in the stream as well. It's probably possibly for the best. Yeah. I wouldn't know. <laughs> I never have a bad hair day, as you can tell. Um, yeah, so um, it was my dad's birthday today. And afterwards, we went to the bookshop, uh, secondhand bookshop, and I came across this a horrifying book, Ripley's Search for the Shrunken Heads and Other Curiosities. I'm probably going to get banned from <laughs> Twitch for hate mm, speech or something. So bad. Yeah, it's it's pretty awful. But I, I wanted to use this to like Would test you like out. To, um... oh, thank you. What could possibly go wrong? What could possibly go wrong indeed? <laughs> oh, do you want to put on your head first? Oh, yeah. I've got a splitter and everything. Oh, I love that. Yes. So I basically wanted to test out because I want to do more reading streams. I want it to be a regular thing like every Saturday um, I do some kind of reading where we do dramatic readings of silly books or good books or whatever. Hey there, Anoki Stahl. But yeah, look at that. Like for a book that's this racist. I know. I used to love these books, um, you know. Uh, being young and ignorant and not really noticing the socio-political elements that were flying above my head. But like, look at this. Look at that. And you can take it out of the, it's the little, little envelope. It's a little certificate. It's shiny. It's got its own envelope. You got your passport here. It's stamped and everything and signed. 
you got this um <laughs> take it from toot <laughs> this page marker um this i just like love that i ate it up when i was a kid oh We've got a letter. Oh my goodness. Do you want to read out the letter, Louis? Oh, it's a long one. It's really long. Feel free to do the abridged version. Abridged. Dear Rip, as I predicted, your last book was an even bigger success than the first. Congratulations. I hope this now forever silences your, oh, I can't write a book. I'm just a two cent newspaper guy claim. Indeed. Bob. Bob. Oh, Bobby. I want you to pack your trunk and I can't do it. <laughs> Wait, isn't it Irish? <clears throat> no, that's that's Guinness Book of Records. <laughs> this is the Guinness, low rent version. Is, yeah, this is Wish.com, Guinness Book of Records. I uh, want you to pack your trunk, your tunk, and head right back out on the Believe It or Not trail. The public simply can't get enough of your fabulous stories. Our phones are ringing off the hook, and the mail takes 12 secretaries all day just to open. I also understand your recent auditorium was a huge success. This is oh just my god. Advertisement. Yeah. Have you ever been to an auditorium? I have. Which one? Did you go to the one on the Sunshine Coast? Um, no, I went I think in Denmark. Oh, okay. I went to the Australian one. Yeah. It's closed down a long time ago. It's probably but for the best. Yeah. I just remember out the front was like a barrel and there was a tap with water coming out of it and the tap was floating. It was magical and I was like, oh my Oh, there was one in Denmark too. Yeah, the tap thing. Yeah. The, the freaking tap thing. It's just gimmick. a carbon copy across all the different yeah, locations, be. I think. And I was so shook. I was like, I don't know, 10. <laughs> and I went, like, went up to it like, whoa. And I put my hand in it and I went clunk because it's just like a see-through pipe that's holding it up. And that was, I think, when my dreams were shattered. That was when you became a skeptic. Yeah, that was, the, Richard that was Dawkins. the moment. I went from being a child to being a man who understood that the world is deeply, deeply disappointing. And I became a man at Ripley, believe it or not. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Excuse me. Yes. Um, anyway, uh, whatever, don't care. We're going to go around the world. More famous than Christopher Columbus, we will oh call you goodness. the modern Marco Polo. You go to South America, Africa, India, China, even Australia. Australia oh mentioned. Ooh. Yeah. <clears throat> um, I wonder if they're going to look at white people in Australia. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think? I think it might. Yeah. Mm, mm, I don't know. We'll see. Uh, oh, my God. It really is just an ad. Uh, Bob, I want you to go everywhere. Is his name Bob? Bob Ripley. Okay. There you go. Robert Ripley. I've learned something today. Uh, Bobby. Yep, he's going to go everywhere. Uh, I'm sure I read something about, yeah, bring back shrunken heads from Ecuador. I feel... I feel like that's going to be it, difficult to get through customs. Mm, I think you have to uh, declare any uh, biological... Any shrunken heads? <laughs> <laughs> ...material that you might be bringing back. Uh, mummies. They want us mm -hmm. to bring back an entire mummy. Um, okay. He's easily done. I, I don't think that's allowed. Just go on, to your local witch on doctor. On any <laughs> One <level>. mummy, please. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> relics from India, statues from China. Be certain to get more of those skull bowls from Tibet. I'm using the one you gave me in my office to hold my business cards. I thought he was going to say drinking out of it. I mean, business cards is not much better than yeah. keeping your drinks in someone's skull. And one last thing, maybe two, don't forget to contact me every week or so. want to know where you are at all times. And just because I'm paying, don't think you don't have to keep an expense account. The auditors will want to know where all my money is going. What a waste of time. Regards, the boss. The boss. The boss. The boss. Well. Thank you for reading that. No worries. So, yeah, this was just in a secondhand bookshop. And I had a look through it, and it's, it's really bad. So I thought, you know... <laughs> Let's buy it. Let's buy it. Now it's mine. So, yes, it's of authentic. It's authentic. Yeah, so you can see the authentic photographs of Robert Ripley going around and, you know. Doing his scam. Who wants to guess <clears throat> if Europe features in Ripley's <laughs> Believe It or Not? Uh, oh my god, I can't get the. Okay, never mind. All good. Well done. So, next page. How oh, are you going to fit a whole mummy thing. in a suitcase? Oh, Important contacts. Oh, it's just the credits. It's the credits. How oh, boring. Oh my god, you spent $20 on this? I spent $20 on this. But thankfully, <sighs> I'm pretty sure Ripley is dead, so the yeah. money isn't going You're to the yeah. state. You're not sending the money to him. He's so, getting nothing out of this. So this, like, this page is really thick. It's chunky. Which makes me wonder if this... Because this... Ah, look. 
the stuff you can lift up mm, yeah. for no particular reason just because oh let's hear it. scar money the natives of nigeria africa oh yeah sorry i should mention first that this is the africa section everyone else has a country but this is africa the natives of Nigeria, Africa, believe that the scars on their bodies may be removed after death and given to the ghosts in exchange for food. Can you believe it? What's with these weirdos and their strange goings on? Ibo country, Africa. <laughs> so you get like this um, diary entry and then... And these are all pictures that this guy drew, apparently. So it is a little bit of history, um, but repackaged for children, essentially. Believe it or not, other cultures exist. Yes. I don't believe it. Oh, there is a big lad. That's, that's a very big... Mm, Great big in death. Fantastic burial ceremonial of a Congo chief. The body is blown up several times. Oh, Blown up several times its natural oh. size. <laughs> Blown up its size, not destroyed. <laughs> to make sure it's dead. Times. <laughs> no, no um, burying someone while they're alive here. We blow it up several times. <laughs> several times its natural size and stuffed with all the personal belongings of the departed. The richer the chief, the greater the funeral and the more times we, we blow up the body. That makes sense. Yes. So these real pictures? They must be. Not stock images? Very authentic. Me and boy from 981 Village, so called because of distance by train to Cape Town. Is that, is that Bob? It must be, yeah. He looks very pleased with himself. Yeah. Samburu woman. Mud Note? Top knot. Note the mud caked top knot. And large earring, possibly gold plate. My sunbonnet Susans. His sunbonnet His. Susans oh my God. from Sudan. Three Zulus, no explanation needed, just three Zulus. <laughs> oh my God, excuse not me. Not one, not two. But three. Three Zulus. Ah, ah, ah. Largest elephant tusk bagged in Ethiopia, now in the British Museum of Natural History, where it's nice and safe. Oh, that's Ripley in Amharic. Oh, I bet you it's not because yeah. I went to the Japan section and no, it's it's okay. not correct. Maybe it means dickhead white man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it probably means dickhead white man. <laughs> oh no, the the interactiveness is. I can't even turn the page. We can't back. handle the interaction. So here we're in Egypt. <gasps> Inside the mummy is another, another mummy. mummy. <laughs> Mummyception. <laughs> it's <laughs> the exact same thing. King Tut. An amazing... Yeah. Oh Inside my god! Inside the mummy, there's a third mummy! Oh what? There can't be more. There is more. Are you Are ready you for serious? this? Are you ready? No. Here it comes. <laughs> and there's more. And there's oh more. Oh my god! Oh, oh my god! god. I, okay. Wow. Okay. What does it say here? Amulets and jewels are wrapped into the bandages as protection on the journey for the next world. Inside, the body should be preserved. Unfortunately, Tutankhamun's body was damaged rather than protected by the substances used for mummification. No wonder he looks so sad. Not looking sad. well. Yeah. No, doesn't let's look like let's a happy put man. that back on your head. Is there a board game where the British Museum is the bad guy? Oh, I should make one if not. Yeah. Oh, hang on. This way. Okay. Lovely. Nice and safe in the British Museum. Ah, the Great oh. Pyramid, the calendar. The Great 3D Pyramid. The Chinese call 1935 the year 4,570. In Armenia, it is year 1382. Blah, 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 blah. And the Hindus call the year 1555219278490004. Oh, those Hindus and their ways. Wacky Hindus. There you go. So more Egypt. The statue that speaks? What does it say there? Gigantic figure, 64 feet high on the River Nile, opposite the ruins of Karnak. 
There are 87 legible inscriptions on the legs of the statue testifying to the day and hour when the phenomenon was heard. Among the listeners were the Emperor Hadrian, Sabina, Tacitus, Pliny, uh, Pausanias, Lucian, and Strabo. Mmm, Strabo. The good old Strabo. I just saw Mr. Fist in response oh. to this number wrote, Call now! <laughs> <laughs> Also, optical illusion. How many cubes? Six or seven? What All does right. this have to do with Egypt? I don't know. Well, we're, we're going to be compiling your answers. <laughs> Vote now. <laughs> okay, so I can see the six. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because okay. it's upside down. Gotcha. Yes, it can be seen both ways. I mean, there is a true answer and get it right or else. Yes. Wars were fought over this yeah. one optical oh, illusion. Let's see. Believe... Eat! Oh my fucking oh, god! Oh my it, god! Believe it or not, in Russian. Da. Believe it believe. or not. Believe. Well done! Oh my god! <laughs> Thank you, Mister Fist. <laughs> believe. Anyway. That was really oh, bad. Yeah. Mm. Mm-hmm. The Tsar Kolokol. I know. Kolokol. 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 Has never been hung or rung. Rung. Same. <laughs> <laughs> well, not a, not a well hung instrument. <laughs> Stuck on the Georgian military highway, March 5th. And then we've got. I can't read that. It's sideways. Yeah. Oh! Vidor. Vidor Mudsnov. Of Jarkov, famous Russian giant at a hand two feet long. There's a joke in there for sure about hands and feet. Yes. It's, uh, it's not coming to me. Yeah, well, I... Oh, Kavdab has been redeemed. Oh, that's what that was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm very much out of touch. Oh, the blood bridge of the Caucasus. By the way, this is the only European representation here if, if Russia counts as Europe. <laughs> That would, yeah, that makes sense. The mortar was mixed with the blood of slaves. No water was used. Human blood is superior to all other binding agents in cohesive strength. And as a result, this arch has withstood violent storms and floods for more than 1,600 years. There you go. Wow. So the next time you're doing some home improvements. <laughs> <laughs> mm, I'll remember that. Oh, mm. there's a horse cemetery in Armenia. You're a van. Hmm. Oh, I want to go to the horse cemetery. Me too. So now we're in ah, here India. We go. India. Oh this is gosh. where it gets good. Sadhu Kitty Car. Oh my god. <laughs> Did you see the Holy Roller? <laughs> <laughs> the Holy Roller. Oh my god. A Sadhu rolled from Lhasa, Tibet to Benares, India, across the snow clad Himalayas. Oh yeah. As you Keep do. rolling, rolling. <laughs> oh, there's a gum nut up my nose. Sorry, that's an Australian one. A gum nut up your yeah, nose? It's this woman who rolls across the country, but she gets a gum nut up her, up her nose. That's a tragic, tragic story. Mm, mm. <laughs> Very sad. So now we've now we start to photograph I, all the. I swear I read about this the other day. Oh yeah. And I think it was a myth or something. Oh, interesting, because, yeah, it seems like the kind of thing that, like, how does he, mm. how has he fed himself for this many what is, years? What is going on here? We get a pop-up moustache. <laughs> Great moustache, <laughs> eight feet, eight inches wide. That This is the actual moustache. Actual size. Does this come off? It looks like it does. Maybe it's... Ah. Oh. Oh, <laughs> there we go. That's oh a ripper, God. mate. It's a Ripley's. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Ripley's of a mustache. Hang on, this must come up too. It's a, a bit sticky after however long it's been. Yes. <laughs> Let's not. It think was dusty when I opened the book. Let's not so... think too much about that. Yes. <laughs> but, especially because it's a mustache. It's yeah. weird. Yeah. Okay, so this guy apparently held his hand closed for 12 years until the nails grew through his palms. Um. Ouch. There you go. Ouch. 
Yeah, it doesn't, oh. doesn't sound like a, a fun thing to happen. <laughs> Eric says, I kind of love these pop-up things in books like this. Yeah. Like, I'm absolute sucker. Me too. Like, that's partially why I bought this book, because <laughs> yeah. it was just so creatively made. Mm. You see, look at the tape that's on here, mm. and then you turn the page. And there's tape. And it's, it's all taped on. taped down. It's unfortunate all that creativity was used for evil. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the eye lift. A remarkable feat of Hindu juggler, uh, of a Hindu juggler who lifts a small boy with his eyeballs. Ow, oh, you shouldn't do that. Whomst among us <laughs> has not. Mm. Uh, yes. Someone who's stuck some scissors through their face. I love how it's exactly the same. So there's yeah. like the picture there. Open the picture. <laughs> oh, same <surprise>. picture. <laughs> surprise. <laughs> same, same. Skewers That's his nice. tongue to maintain a vow of silence. Oh, goodness. Ouch. The, the things we do. Mm. Human hothouse. What is that? Stretched himself full length upon the ground and then with great deliberation placed a handful of moist earth on his underlip. Then a few grains of mustard seed were planted in the earth. The man, man lay perfectly motionless and remained without food and drink, exposed to the heat of the sun and the chill of the night until the seed germinated and burst forth into a plant, which was the fourth day after he lay down. That's, that's bad spelling. <laughs> yeah, it is. Oh, wait, no, sorry. It's the bad... I, I was reading burst forth... And then I read the fourth oh, there. Okay, so. I did the same thing. <laughs> mm. Oh, gee, Mr. Fist said that's an eyeful about this, oh, this guy gosh. with the dangling eyes. Yeah, apparently without water or food. I need to be quick to catch Mr. Fist's puns. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so this apparently ah. opens up. Ah, so this is Tibet. The politest and most respectful greeting that a Tibetan can give you is to stick out his tongue at you as far as he can and raise his thumb in hitchhike fashion. The longer the tongue, the more respectful he is. I, I wonder how much of this stuff is actually true. I was going to say, I wonder how many of this stuff the people just made shit up and to see if he would write it down. Because like, there's some stuff that's further along that is, is just straight up yeah. untrue. Oh dear. What have we got here? So now we're in China from Tibet. Four eyes. Double eyed man. And now a man with three buttocks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh my god, this strange freak of nature. What a horrible way to refer to this person. Yeah. Uh, he became <clears throat> governor of Shanxi in AD 955, minister of state. And through intrigue with the Dowager Empress, had his son proclaimed heir apparent. He also loved wine and gambling and pina coladas and getting caught in the rain. <laughs> A little bit of trivia for you there. Mm. Hope you're all taking notes. Fun fact. Talk about double vision, says Mr. Fist. <laughs> <laughs> Lu Chun of Canton. Uh, champion flea catcher of China caught 13,400 fleas in six hours. I wonder who was keeping count. Mm. The Chinese character Longevity written 100 different ways. Oh, yeah. Yeah? Yeah, seems legit. Okay. All yeah. right. There you go. What, <clears throat> is, what is going on here? Oh. Time to face the facts. <laughs> oh, my God. And then they put it on upside down. I mean, come oh. on, people. The headdress, pag pag go, headdress which only Tibetan women of unmixed blood may wear costs fifteen hundred dollars. It is a sign that its wearer is a pure Tibetan and has not intermarried with the Nepalese. Wow. Okay. Ornamented with turquoises, corals, and pearls, and is interwoven with the woman's own hair. Because it is so intricate, the hat was worn for life. Oh, goodness. I guess if, if it's made with your own hair. Oh, yeah, that's kind of the idea, I guess. Um, speaking of which, I found out, and I don't know whether this is a recent thing, but apparently Nepal has um, uh, passed marriage equality. Oh, really? And it's the first South Asian country to, to do it. Wow. So, well done, Nepal. Yes. Very good. I wonder if now Tibetan uh, queer people can marry into Nepal, mm. or whether that was... <laughs> it's just <laughs> it's a bit of a paradox. The heterosexual, according to Ripley. <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> 
So still China. Still China. China. The ideogram that caused a war. The famous opium war began because the Chinese government refused to prohibit this insulting epithet of tea. Tea. That's not what. Does that, that make is. any sense to anyone else? It doesn't really make sense to me, and I'm pretty sure the Opium War began because Britain, <laughs> but... Uh, no, no, no. Can't, couldn't be right. <laughs> that, that's not right. It must be the Chinese being stupid. Yeah, yeah. Let's have a look. In the Chinese language, the word peace indicated by a pig under a roof. No. No, peace is, peace is a woman under a roof. Yeah, because isn't this whole bit <clears throat> about women? Like, two women may quarrel, three women yeah. may gossip. So, where did pig come from? <laughs> women are pigs, I guess. <laughs> women, pig, same thing. Yeah. Look at <clears throat> the cats. Nice Siamese cats. Siamese cats were considered sacred and could be owned only by those of royal blood. Siam. Okay, approaching Bangkok. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, let's watch this. This is Ooh, great. Okay, everyone, be prepared. Ha! Ah. Oh! <laughs> oh my goodness. Wow. That is a pop-up crown. Amazing. I think, or a building. I'm not sure. Oh, maybe it's a building. Stucco? We've got all these buildings yeah. going on here. Doesn't really say. Oh, the strangest punishment for infidelity. Padang wives of Burma, who have been unfaithful to their husbands, may be forced to remove the copper coals they wear around their necks which is equivalent to a death sentence because the neck muscles have atrophied and cannot support the victim's head. Oh my god. A necking party. The giraffe women. Uh, do you think they're called giraffe women in Myanmar? No. <laughs> <laughs> women be gossiping. Women be gossiping. Mm-hmm. Am I right? Am I right, ladies? Ah, the pagoda was <coughs> built at a cost of nearly $20 million to house three hairs from the head of the Buddha. The Burmese believe that if you come within a thousand miles of one hair from the head of Buddha, no misfortune can ever befall you in life. Ah. Oh. That's good to know. Oh, sorry, that I was focusing on the wrong thing. <laughs> <laughs> you were reading from there and I was ah. like <laughs> zooming in on that. <laughs> Now, I, I just kind of believe that everything, everything. can be touched yeah. and interacted with. And it's disappointing when it is. Oh, here we <clears> go. Ah, <throat> uh, here we go. Here's Japan. This is my turf. So, <coughs> so bless me. you. Tailless what is chickens. This? Oh, yes. Wait, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Have you got that, that chicken? instrument somewhere oh it's um yes it's on the shelf over there i'll try and find it okay so bear with us for a second um this is very important this is very important all of one second for the purpose of a joke oh yes i found it but yeah this is another cool pop-up thing whoa you know i think i might actually have a chicken running around my house somewhere can anyone tell me if they hear the chicken coming I think I hear my chicken. <laughs> Mr. Fist says, bless you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Fist. <laughs> so the story behind that is I bought it in Argentina when I was traveling around Argentina. Uh, it's like a chicken made out of cardboard. And yeah, it sounds like a chicken when you pull a string. <laughs> that, that, that's the show. It's um, the best. <laughs> and I bought it for my sibling because I thought it was funny and I thought they would appreciate it, but they didn't. They did not. They were really annoyed because I'd gotten, I think, I'd gotten my parents like big lavish gifts and I got, I got my sibling <laughs> a toy chicken. And so in protest, I reclaimed it. Good present. <laughs> what a waste. Anyway, I've gotten a lot of mileage out of it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that was important. The sacred horse of Nara Japan. <laughs> Eric! <laughs> I can kind of understand them. 
<laughs> yeah, I guess if I bought expensive stuff for everyone else, then that's what I got right now. I mean, I, I, I feel like I got them other things as well. The Shinto faith is mysterious. It has to no... Who? Yeah, exactly. It's like, I'm pretty sure it's not mysterious to people who follow it. Hmm. No Bible, no idol, no oh, separate... Very mysterious indeed. It doesn't have any of these Western things. Mm-hmm. More than two, 20 million people who bow their heads before them each day. In addition, there are... Blah, 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 and a Japanese can believe in... A Japanese. A Japanese can believe in... This was published in 2007. I just want to repeat... <laughs> It's so it is that without a system of theological belief, without dogma, without philosophy, uh, without idols and without a special priesthood, this this strange faith, strange faith has Mm. flourished. And in addition, has provided a nation with a love of nature, patriotism, love of family and filial reverence, reverence. Mm. Very strange. Oh, there was one thing that they wrote about um, how people bow when they meet each other. And how they bow like they have to bow. oh here we go when they meet each bows three times everything is ceremonious when a japanese meets his friend each bows three times and they seem to have a lot of friends for they all seem to be bowing most of the time <laughs> oh. mm. yeah and this is sayonara but it's missing a character and also, that's that's the wrong character. That's not that. That is war. <laughs> Sayonara. Sayonara war. <laughs> Sayonara war. <laughs> so it doesn't mean anything. Their faith is strange, unlike ours. <laughs> I wonder if they got any input. Well, I think this indicates that no, they didn't get any input. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Oh, dear. The most honorable moustache in Japan. Grown. <laughs> I love how you grow a moustache like you're cultivating it. By General Nagaoka, president of the International Moustache Club, Fujiya Hotel, Pagoda, Miyanoshita, Japan. That is a magnificent moustache. It, it is a pretty magnificent Puts mine Japan. to shame. <laughs> Tokyo. Wow, that's yeah. old school. Very old school. And um, then you've got these lovely... Oh, yes, we've gone, we've gone straight from Japan to New Guinea. I need to censor this. Thank you for censoring Censored. the it's person's face. Oh, that's not yeah. maneuverable. They're kind of, they seem like they ran out of steam with the, you know, fun, you know, flip up things. Yeah. They're like, uh. A waste of energy. The Tanobada tribe of New Guinea wear tight belts to show that they eat little in order to obtain wives more easily. It is a disgrace to be fat in Papua. And so, <laughs> oh, okay, that's meant to follow on. There you go. And then you've got, you've got Ripley and he's just like, <laughs> Where's your belt, Ripley? <laughs> Very un, uneligible, ineligible bachelor there. Mm. New Zealand. Okay. Well, I well, wooden ancestor figures, statues of revered people had real human heads. They were displayed by strapping them to the front of clan houses. Believed to possess the virtues of the deceased, the skulls and the statues they adorned were considered holy and held the clan together by linking the past and the present. It takes them at least a day, all caps, to get really warmed up, and the longer they dance, the better they dance, despite the heat and physical effort. At least a day. They were all in perfect tune and rhythm. They were all real native dancers. And each tribe performed his own particular dance. The demonstration steadily getting better as the day wore on. Oh my god. Kai Aura. (laughs) Yeah. Kai Aura, everyone. (laughs) Oh, gee. That's bad. Oh, this is kind of cool. The vegetable caterpillar. And the animal that grows into a tree. I don't believe it. I mean, here's Kai Aura. So, I mean, that's the level of fact-checking that's going on here. So. Mm-hmm. Well, there you go. Um, look at this. An endless strip that crosses over and under itself, alternating, but never twice in succession. It's very New Zealand. Very, very much. This is New Zealand culture. 
voucher. Uh, we have a letter, Mr. Oh, yes. Ripley, SS Mariposa. Oh, what's inside? Uh, oh, this is the glowworm. Oh, cave. that's kind of cool. Does it go this way or this way? Sure, Are they stalactites or stalagmites? Ah, oh, it's both. The glowworm grotto. A gorgeous scene like a dreamless paradise. Why is it? Please dreamless? believe it or call BS. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we're doing more of the latter. Yeah. We may on a boat in the caves. Simply breathtaking. He's on a boat. Oh, I can't see his face. That's it's true. very washed out. <laughs> yeah, it is kind of like a straight line. It's like that grimace emoji. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, okay, whatever, man. Yeah, whatever. Oh, shit. <gasps> I dropped the priceless artifact. What have you done? Okay. Oh, Department of Tourist and Health Resorts, Auckland. Dear sir, I have pleasure in or attaching madam. here to photograph of glowworm threads in the Waitomo Caves, North Island of New Zealand. I regret I am not able to obtain a photograph of the Pohu tu kawa or the Christmas tree. I could not on such short notice obtain a photograph. Is it photograph or a photograph? Of the dancing boulder. But am procuring one and will forward on to you in due course. Mm -hmm. I am sending, however, a booklet on Wairakei, which I trust will be of assistance to you. Fuck. <laughs> <It looks like laughs> that will be fuck of assistance Will be fuck you. all assistance to you. <laughs> I trust that will be of fuck all assistance to you. <laughs> Good sir. Kai Aura. Kai Aura. Okay, now we're getting... Oh, here we go, Australia. mate. Australia. Here we go. The bulldog ant, if cut in two, a battle starts between the head and tail. The head bites the tail and the tail stings the head. I see. There you go. It's science. That's how it works. Oh my god. Oh um, my god, let's. I can't even. Yeah, there's um, inappropriate Oof. language to describe Aboriginal people there. An Australian bushman threw a boomerang 300 feet. The Stone Age men. Oh my god. Ugh. Oh. Live the same today as they did 100,000 years ago. <laughs> Kookaburra, the, the laughing, laughing jackass. jackass is a bird. He laughs like a man and eats snakes. Same. <laughs> what a weird string of sentences. Oh. I assume you have different accents. Yes. Oh. What's the most Australian accent? Uh, they're not that distinguishable, and they're more along class lines than yeah regional. Um, like in South Australia, they say dance. And most of the rest of the place, they say dance. Yes. Uh, but even that, like, if you have a posh person here in Melbourne, they might say dance as well because they want to seem posh. Anyway, you can look it up. Um, Steve Irwin had a very, very broad accent, obviously. Yeah, he's probably the, <laughs> the prime the example. prototypical of... broad accent. Um, yeah, gee, gorgeous. My oh, accent uh, is not seen as Australian <laughs> for most Australians. Yeah. yeah. They're like, where are you from? Are you from Canada? They always ask if I'm from Canada. Canada. A few Australian words. Try them on your larynx. Oh my God. Would you like to go, Louie? <laughs> not really. <laughs> I'll say Woolloomooloo because okay. I know that one. I don't know. Oh, Murrumbidgee. Where the Murrumbidgee's flowing. Gundi Windy. Yakamurundi. Murray, Mil Murray Willumba, Cooley Wurty, Goomaroo, Mullen Gudgery. Oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. Mullen Gudgery. What's all this Mullen Gudgery? The koala has an appendix eight foot long. It looks really pissed off. <laughs> it's like you would too if your appendix <laughs> Don't was judge eight me. Oh, oh, this is the first pull out. Oh, I love it. Sorry, I just got it. We're up to Fiji. Here we go. <laughs> this is fun. Fiji Island child born with three heads and a tail. The baby was born dead. The child had a nose and mouth on each head, but the eyes were closed. 
American medical authorities said the malformed child was probably the first of its kind in the human race, although bi-headed children have been born. Okay. There you go. Help yourself. It's honest. We don't have thievery in the Fiji Islands. We just have what you might think is a very peculiar custom, explained Father Laplante. If a native goes sorry, sorry visiting and sees a shirt, soup, soup, soap. soap, cooking utensil or something that strikes his fancy in his host's cabin, he just picks it up and takes it home with him. Native courtesy denies even mentioning the word don't. You've just got to be relieved of whatever your guest likes and get it back on your next visit to his house or something else with the equivalent. That's not something I've come across. Seems legit. Yeah. Just take whatever you want. That's yeah. That's how it works. So what's this about sharks? Um, uh, they make a net uh, that they stretch across a shark infe- infected, infested river. Uh, they kiss them on their upturned bellies. Oh, that's cute. That's Who's a good sweet. shark? Mm. Oh, that's very sweet. What a good shark. I actually can't read this because it's sideways. Among the natives, it is taken for granted that once a shark is kissed, that is the end of it. Um, so it's the kiss mm, of death. Okay, right. So, I mean, just to give you a bit of context, sharks, shark's teeth um, were very valuable um, and are often given as gifts uh, for people. So sharks are very important in Fijian uh, culture. We've got a magic dollar here. All diameters and wedges total one dollar. Good. I'm going to believe you. I choose to believe that. <laughs> Okay, wonders of the deep. This is this is what um, oh. we see these all the time on the islands, and this is Bulum Baluba what? from Ripley. Bulum Baluba. I think it might be like Bulavinaka, but Bula, Bulum 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 Baluba. And it's not like how they used to say it. It's just okay. <laughs> okay. And also this this year, so Udrana, chief of the Rakerukis, Fiji Island, ate 1,872 long pigs, human beings, during his lifetime. Long pigs was not a term used in Fiji. Um, the name of this person is Andre Andre, not Udrani. Um, and he was chief of Reki Reki, not Rakeruki. Rakeruki. Yeah. So, ah, we are from Raki Raki. Yeah. No. Reki Reki. Rakeruki. Rakeruki. Not Rakeruki. That's not a. That doesn't exist. Um. So yeah, just to correct, make make a few corrections. Oops. One thing I am pleasantly surprised by is the fact that they don't have a cannibal fork yeah, anywhere. Yeah, I was going to say, I was waiting for it, and uh, I don't see any. Yeah, not like, but there's the <gasps> shark tooth necklace there. <laughs> Eric says, wait, 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 this book got something wrong. <laughs> I, I know, know. I'm, I'm shocked. Sorry to break the news. Look, mathematical straps, total 85 in all directions. I believe you. By the way, Bulumbalooba. <laughs> Bulumbalooba. <laughs> Okay, sure. Sorry. (laughs) I just was... (laughs) Didn't want to share what you saw. No, no. I I want want to to buy buy a volcano. volcano. Don't we all? I want to buy a volcano now. Look at all this stuff. Where are we now? Mexico. That's quite a jump. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) He gets around a bit. Mm. Yeah, so this is the Caribbean. Mexico is just volcano one page. And, uh, it's got a volcano, yeah. yeah. Birthplace of the Mayans, but fine. Yeah. That's oh. quite pretty. It says something on the back that I can't be bothered reading. Fifteen men on the dead man's chest. Yo ho ho and a bottle of rum. Drink and the devil had done for the rest. Yo ho ho. And a bottle of rum. (laughs) Sure enough, the islands, and there are two, bear a striking resemblance to a gigantic dead man lying in the water. There you go. Ah, yeah. Can't you see the resemblance? Mm. 
it's gigantic it's uncanny. dead man. Mm. Absolutely. Ah, oh, yeah. Here we go. There, there, there we go. These shrunken heads that this whole vern is <laughs> a volcano now. <laughs> <laughs> oh. The sketch, this sketch was drawn from a human head that I bought for a little less than $100 from a bootlegger of human heads in Panama City. The head itself is now about the size of a baseball. What a bargain. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Snakes have hips. What? You heard it. You heard it first. I believe it. Snakes have hips. That's great. Thank you for mm -hmm. sharing that. Yeah. Um, we can sleep easy now. Mm, Snakes have hips. I needed to know that. Um, I guess I'm going to... Very momentous. Oh. I'm going to undo this. Probably okay. hasn't been undone for... 200 years. years. <laughs> it's like opening the secret vault. Oh my god, okay. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> Apologies, everyone. Sorry. No one there's, needs to see there's this. There's a lot in there. You oh. can just believe me. Um, Jesus Christ. How to make a shrunken <laughs> head. Oh, good. Just okay. For Take notes, reference. everyone. Uh, this is like a recipe. Mm -hmm. um, I prefer chocolate cake, but... Um... Ingredients. <laughs> Three Head. heads. Mm. As soon as a Givaro, sorry for my pronunciation, has killed an enemy, he hacks off the head as close to the body as possible, carries it away to a place of safety where he goes through a ceremony and slits the scalp from the crown downwards to the nape of the neck. Through this opening, he flays out the skull, carefully removing the flesh of the skin of the face and scalp. Mm. <laughs> Step two. <laughs> Throwing away the skull, he stretches the skin over a handle made of wood and then thrusts it for a time into a vessel of hot water, which causes it to contract a little. Step three. Next, a ring fashioned from a vine is sewed in the neck opening to hold it open, after which hot stones are dropped inside. Step four, magic rites are intermingled with each new process as the shrinking is begun by filling the head with hot sand and keeping it constantly in motion in order that it may act on all parts of the head uniformly. As the sand cools off, it is reheated and placed back in the head, which is scraped each time with a knife to remove the burnt tissues. Gradually, as the head dries and grows smaller, the in Indian works the features with his hands pinching and moulding the face so that it will retain its natural appearance and even its natural expression when reduced several times in size. So there you go. There you go. There'll be a test on this <laughs> next stream. Excellent uh, knowledge. By the way, did you know, Louis, the Inca Atahualpa had ears 15 inches long? I believe it. You believe it? Okay. I believe that. There we, we go. We just have to um, safely... Uh, um, seal this one back up. I don't want those shrunken heads escaping anywhere. Oh, this is in. I wonder if this is true. Tree trees lift themselves out of the ground in Ecuador. Washouts are impossible. It's a natural. It's a natural phenomenon. It's the ants. They go walking. Yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry. Here's here's one more. Oh, that's the one. Yeah. Peruvian Jose Fernandez can drive a 20 penny nail into his head up to the hilt. When you said that, you didn't mention that it was through his nose. Because that's not into his head. That is into the sinus. <laughs> that is a natural orifice. There is no penetrating of any flesh. 20 pennies, though. 20 pennies, indeed. Oh, Ripley's Ramble. I mean, what was the rest of this? I book? know. <laughs> Wasn't that everything else? Oh my God. <laughs> so, three hairs from the head of Gautama, the bathing ghats of the Ganges, are the most interesting part of my whole trip. They extend for a distance of four miles along the bend. Blah, 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 blah. New York! I hope you enjoyed reading this little ramble round. It was a joy indeed to write it. Let's look at the disco knowledge. Oh, yes. Disco knowledge. I disco. have disco knowledge. You can ring my bell. <laughs> ring my bell. I have knowledge of that being a song. I want to read about horses' legs. Okay, please. Are uh, just as long when born as they ever will be. So that's why foals are really clumsy. 
I'd believe that. Oh, I do believe that. Oh, that's really me. cute. A little gangly, gangly horse. And and then we have random facts. I thought that these would be about horses' legs. The same thing. But However, this is about the Australian jungle fowl, which can fly as soon as it is hatched. And there's a little picture of it. There you go. What else have we got in here? Benedict Arnold, traitor, also a hero of the Revolutionary <laughs> War. <laughs> what? Oh shit! Sorry, everyone. That was a that was a full on that was a head throwback, <laughs> full on laugh. <laughs> what does it say? Washington's ableist general. And I was like, what do you mean he's ableist? <laughs> Well, it says he's a hero and a villain, right? So. <laughs> like, what did he do that was so ableist? He's a general, but he's ableist. <laughs> yeah, cancelled. <laughs> what are you going to do? Uh, Problematic fave. <laughs> and um, a spider web is str- stronger than steel of the same thickness. I feel like everyone knows that now. Boring. Get better facts. <laughs> Could not speak. Wait. Could not speak Hungarian. I need to know about that. First, I want to read about a female codfish, which lays 9 million eggs a year. Now I need to read about could not speak Hungarian. List. Famous Hungarian composer. Could not speak Hungarian. Okay, so it's like a quiz. TNT. A high explosive will not explode when lighted by a match. Well, there you go. What else have we got around? We've the... got contradicting proverbs, which I don't agree with. Minds of great men run in the same channel. All fools think alike. <laughs> While one exists, the other cannot live. <laughs> <laughs> Starting the world war. Franz Ferdinand? No. Mind your bi- I need to read so about mind your business. <laughs> <Dang on. laughs> Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, what does that say? US currency once bore this motto. Mind your business. <laughs> and it still should. <laughs> the nine of diamonds. Nine of diamonds. Curse of Scotland. The butcher duke of Cumberland wrote the death sentence of 2,000 Scotchmen on it. Oh, Why? poor Scotch. To, Those Scotchmen. To live the wrong way is evil. <gasps> oh my god. Did you also know that Nilberg is goblin spelled backwards? <gasps> oh my god. Mm-hmm. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> the following sayings, old sayings, are all false. <gasps> Blind as a bat. No. Proud as a peacock. They're not proud, actually. They're, They're very proud. modest. They're very, yeah. very modest. Very Easily humble, embarrassed. Humble birds. <laughs> Quiet as a mouse. Yeah, they go squeak, 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 squeak. Who hasn't heard a mouse, yes. honestly? Mad as a hornet. They're actually They're peaceful They're really creatures. chill. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wise as an owl. Famously stupid birds, owls. <laughs> Crazy as a loon. I don't even know what a loon is. I don't know what a loon I'm assuming it's a bird. Yeah, I think it is, actually. Yeah, well. Mm. 40,000 roses are required to make one ounce of attar of roses, which I don't know Uh, what that is. What? There is enough nicotine in one cigar, if taken internally, (laughs) to kill four men. So don't stick a cigar up your butt, folks. (laughs) That's the wrong way to do it. (laughs) That's not how you're meant to do it. You're doing it wrong. Uh. (gasps) Water is the most powerful explosive known. Water is composed of oxygen and hydrogen. Both gases can be liquefied, and the mixture of these liquids is the most powerful explosive. Wait. Excuse me, known to science. Yeah, but... So it's not the most powerful explosive known. The powerful explosive known is the combination... Yeah, the, the ...of water, oxygen, of wa- oxygen and hydrogen. Believe it or not. Believe it or not. Hooray. There we go. Oh, I was meant to read this first. Oh. 
Okay, let's just read this. This fascinating facsimile diary offers a first-hand account of Robert Ripley's travels to far-flung, exotic corners of the globe in search of the weird and the wonderful during Mm. the 1930s, a more enlightened time. (laughs) Things were just better. Uh. Inside Ripley's own drawings, cartoons, and memorabilia evoked the strange and bizarre world that unfolded before his eyes. From lakes of soda and bridges of blood to the shrunken heads themselves, Ripley's discoveries are laid out for you to explore in fantastic three-dimensional detail in this extraordinary book. Search for the Shrunken Heads. Wonderful. So that was that, was that book, the highlights, the abridged version. <laughs> now you've basically read it, so no need to go and find no it. No need to go and find it yourself. And 